Recording has started. All right, we'll call the regular meeting of February 16th, 2021 to order. Can we have the flag for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag United, United States, States of America. Of America. America. And, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, which it stands one nation, one nation under, God, under God, indivisible, indivisible liberty, liberty, and justice. And justice, justice. Yeah. Roll call, please. John Douglas. Here. Michael Howry. Here. Michelle Hayes. Here. Brian Hubert. Here. Gene Sensi. Here. Is there a motion to approve the agenda? I'll move. A second. Any discussion? Roll call. John Douglas. Yes. Michael Howry. Yes. Jill Hayes. Yes. Ryan Horvath. Yes. Dean Sensi. Yes. Vote is 5 0. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the organizational meeting of January 5th, 2021? I'll, I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call. Michael Howry. Yes. Michelle Hayes. Yes. Ryan Horvath. Yes. Gene Sensi. Yes. John Douglas. Yes. Vote is 5 0. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of January 12th, 2021? I'll move. I'll, I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call. Michelle Hayes. Yes. Ryan Horvath. Yes. Gene Sensi. Yes. John Douglas. Yes. Michael Howry. Yes. Vote is 5 0. Is there a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of January 19th, 2021? I'll move. I'll move. Second. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call. Ryan Horvath? Yes. Gene Sensi? Yes. John Douglas? Yes. Michael Howry? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Vote is 5 0. All right, we'll now open the public participation portion. This is on agenda items only. Anyone wishing to address the board on any agenda item would have five minutes to do so. If you could state your name and address for the board, please. I've given everybody the opportunity to unmute themselves. <clears throat> you see anything, Mike? I'm unmuted. Looks like there's Paul Pastor unmuted and Joe. Just joining the meeting to uh, experience it. Well, welcome. Yeah, I muted Paul because of the noise. If he needs to unmute, he can. Did Joe want to say something? I see he's unmuted. Uh, not right now. Okay. Anyone else? All right, seeing none, we'll move, we'll move on to board member reports. Before we I'll do that, go to the mute all and then just unmute the board and the administration. <laughs> Mike, are you able to unmute? There we go. We should be good. Okay. Anyone wishing to give a board member report this evening? All right. Seeing none, reports and recommendations of the treasurer. 
Thank you. Um, just a couple of quick items. Uh, the audit for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2020 is still ongoing. Uh, they issued the procedures to test the uh, CARES Act money that we got in May. Um, and I have sent him, hopefully today, everything he needs to finish that. His goal is to finish it on Monday. And hopefully this is the last item they need so they can wrap up our audit. Again, as it stands right now, there's there's no issues other than the fact that we don't prepare a financial statement on the generally accepted accounting principles basis. And the reason we don't do that is it'll cost about $18,000 to do it. And it really um, has no benefit to us. Um, the other item is on, on the board agenda items, the five-year forecast, I've sent that to the board. Um, and that's basically what we talked about two weeks ago, the changes that were made. And we are advertising for buses with the Ohio School Council. The benefit of doing that is one, it doesn't cost us anything. Two, it saves us in the legal notice that we would have to publish to bid buses. And three, when you have a group of that size, um, the manufacturers sharpen their pencil to get as many of those bids as possible from the one bidding process. Uh, we do get exactly what we want in a bus. We are late, allowed to pick and choose our options, um, but where we benefit is the base price of a 78 passenger bus like we purchased is going to be lower when the manufacturer has an opportunity to sell upwards of 140 of them as opposed to one we may buy. So we've done that every, I, I, all 10 years I've been here. If we're buying a bus, we do it through the Ohio Schools Council. It, it saves us quite a bit of money. So. And then Mike, yes, could you just, for people that are watching, address that we have money specifically that comes in specifically for uh, not just buses, but you know, uh, computer equipment, things of that nature. So they understand it doesn't come out of the general fund. It's not why we're asking for more money, anything of that nature. That that is correct. In ten years, sir, I think we've only purchased one out of the general fund. Um, we purchase buses out of the permanent improvement levy. Uh, it's a one mil levy that generates about $175,000 a year. Um, and that goes back, I don't know, 20 years. So buses now cost a little bit less than $90,000. So the, the, the levy that used to be able to buy three or four buses now buys almost two. Um, but for example, we have purchased buses where the EPA funded part of the purchase price. The bus that we're getting may have gotten last week or getting this week or next week, somewhere in this time frame. Um, half of that is funded through the state and the other half is through this, this uh, levy that we have. So we don't purchase buses through the general fund. We just don't have the ability to spend $85,000, $90,000 on a bus when we have to, uh, we have operating expenses to use out of out of the general fund. So a purchase of a bus is not the reason why we're asking for a levy. Um, another thing we do in this district is we buy used buses from other districts. Uh, we have purchased buses from Riverside, from Geneva, and we are in the process of purchasing two buses from Orange. Why do we do that? Because we don't get enough money to keep up with the proper... Uh, replacement schedule of our fleet. So we get buses for $2,500 that'll last us four or five years um, as spares. And we can, you know, keep the newer stuff on the road, but have reliable spares instead of buying new to push a less used bus down as a spare. So that's how we are able to keep our fleet on the road with a levy that only replaces maybe two a year. Mm -hmm. And just go a little bit further, that levy also pays for uh, building improvements, for lack of a better term, um, and technology. And, you know, $175,000 a year does not go very far um, when you're looking at the, the, the dollar amount of the items that we're purchasing out of that levy. Right. And just for clarification, so that people understand, because they hear levy and they just think, you know, well, we're giving you money. It's a levy. So permanent improvement levy 
cannot go for operational costs. That's correct. Right. Okay. So I just want people to understand that we're asking for an operational cost, a levy for operations, um, and, and that the levy that we have currently cannot, um, even though it's, it, and it's not near enough money, um, but it also can't go towards those costs. It, it cannot go for salaries, benefits, anything like that. It's not allowed. Thank you. So if there's no further questions, I'm gonna move on to the items in the agenda. Um, the first is to approve the financial reports for all funds, the fund to fund transfer report and the check payment register for January, 2021. I'll move. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call. Dean Sensi. Yes. Sean Douglas? Yes. Michael Howry? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Brian Horvath? Yes. Vote is 5-0. The next is to accept a generous donation of a gift card and t-shirt from Pink Bandana Baker to Madison Local School District to be used for the district spelling bee. Generous donation of $200 from Allison White to North Elementary School to be used for the Coffee Bean Club. A generous donation of protein bars from Jordan Tant and Madison Walmart to Madison Middle School to be used for the girls basketball team. Generous donation of hats, scarves, and gloves from Park United Methodist Church to North Elementary School to be used as needed. Generous donation of hats, scarves, and gloves from Park United Methodist Church to South Elementary School to be used as needed. Generous donation of $100 from Allison White to North Elementary School to be used for PBS prizes. And finally, a generous donation of school supplies from Madison Walmart to North Elementary School to be used as needed. I'll move. Second. Any discussion? Thank you to those in the community and outside of our community. Some of those, I, I believe the cupcake baker was um, from outside of our community. So thank you to everyone that donated. We appreciate it. You're very generous with our kids. And then I just have a quick question um, or request. Could, could someone come and, and um, at a, a future meeting, it doesn't have to be immediate, but could they come and present the Coffee Bean Club to us? Sure, we can, we can make that happen. Better not be Zoom so we can uh, taste the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? Roll call. John Douglas. Yes. Michael Howry. Yes. Michelle Hayes. Yes. Ryan Horvath. Yes. Dean Sensi. Yes. Vote is 5-0. The next is to approve the five-year forecast <clears throat> years 2021 through 2025, the February update as presented and found on file in the treasurer's office. I'll move. Second. Any discussion? Roll call. Michael Howry. Yes. Michelle Hayes. Yes. Ryan Horvath. Yes. Dean Sensi. Yes. John Douglas. Yes. Vote is 5-0. And finally this evening, um, Whereas the Madison Local Schools Board of Education wishes to advertise and receive bids for the purchase of at least one of the following, 78 passenger transit style puller and or 54 passenger transit style puller. Therefore, be it resolved, the Madison Local Schools Board of Education wishes to participate and authorizes the Ohio Schools Council to advertise and receive bids on behalf of said board as per the specification submitted for the cooperative purchase of at least one of the following, 78 passenger transit style puller and or 54 passenger transit style puller. I'll move. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call. Michelle Hayes. Yes. Ryan Horvath. Yes. Gene Sensi. Yes. John Douglas. Yes. Michael Howry. Yes. Vote is 5-0. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Reports of the administrative team. Yes, I have a, a few items this evening. I thought I'd start tonight by clarifying 
the March 1st in-person um, return to in-person learning uh, that's been a lot in the news lately with the governor. Um, when, back in January, when he said he was going to give teachers the opportunity to have vaccines, districts had to commit to being in person for learning five days a week. Um, at that time, back in the middle of January, you had to sign a form to commit. Well, it was easy for us to commit because we do have in-person learning five days a week, but our parents also have the option, which they chose at semester, because you just can't have students moving in and out because it was it's a lot of moving parts and a lot of scheduling. They chose it semester to either come back or, or remain remote. And so we are in compliance with uh, what the governor has asked us to do because all our buildings are in person five days a week. Um, you know, we went remote for a while when cases spiked. Cases have gone down um, incredibly over the last several weeks. Uh, doesn't mean we're out of the woods yet, but between all the mitigation strategies and the vaccines that we have, um, I'm, you know, fingers crossed that we can keep these kids in school for the rest of the year and not have to have any periods of remote learning. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that for the board and the community, because I know the governor has been on the news a lot lately, uh, even as late as Friday evening, having a separate press conference to talk about several school districts that said they would be back in by March 1st and they haven't been in school at all this year. So, um, you know, we've had a five day a week model since the start of the school year. Uh, to that end, we do have the vaccine days next week and we used um, Thursday and Friday um, as remote learning days for all students uh, where they'll log in, get an assignment or teachers will send assignments home with them while teachers get their vaccine on Thursday and do some professional development on Friday um, regarding social, emotional health and trauma. So we are set for those vaccines. We still don't know which vaccine uh, our staff will get. Uh, we won't know that till next week, I think, maybe the end of the week um, when we there's a final commitment to the order uh, for those vaccines could be Pfizer, could be Moderna. Most of Lake County has been Moderna. So it just, uh, we'll know. Uh, if it's Moderna, then the second dose of the vaccine is being given over spring break and there would be no disruption to school. If it's Pfizer, um, there would be some disruption to school because it would be the week before spring break. But I will let everyone know that as soon as I know that. Um, one other thing, since we had our first snow day uh, in, since November, when we did have to have a calamity day, when we, it was our first remote day and we had the windstorm and there was no power, um, but this was our first traditional snow day. It, we are using what are called blizzard bag days uh, where students, again, will check the Google Classroom but do not have to log on for an extended period of time, work at their own pace and complete assignments that were given by the teachers um, for today. Uh, these blizzard bags are supposed to be either reinforcement of learning or enrichment of learning, but no new instruction. Um, because again, the teachers aren't there during the blizzard bag days to provide that direct instruction. And we are doing that for the, if we have four snow days, it would be the first four snow days because of the four professional development days we had at the beginning of the school year. This would allow us that if we had to have some extended uh, snowstorms, and it doesn't look like we will anymore. I mean, it's February and we've had our first snow day, middle of February, but it was to make sure that we would have enough days or hours in our um, schedule to be compliant with the state. Um, another thing the governor has talked a lot about um, is summer intervention. And last week he did a, last week must have been education week for him because he did a couple different press conferences. And today spent a lot of time talking about edu 
education again. But last week you talked about summer intervention and our staff has already started to talk about that, knowing that we would need to do some things to close the gap. We're gonna be bringing teachers together with principals to come up with ways to have meaningful intervention for students that not only look at um, the academic pieces, but transitioning some of those students back that have been away from school for over a year. Um, it would be our hope that next year we are back to regular learning, fingers crossed, and that all our students are back in the building. We still don't know what next year is going to bring, but we have to start planning for that. And intervention is going to be a big piece of that. And, you know, one of the things I said to uh, my team last week was it can't be the same type of learning that they've you know had for the last year we've got to sort of a hook and make it fun and make kids feel connected so we have a lot of talented people with a lot of good ideas and i think we'll be able to provide that those types of opportunities another piece that has come out from ode is the talk of spring testing now there's a bill in uh, the legislature that wants to put a hold to the assessments or ask for a waiver but there is a strong push that we need baseline data for our, our students to know what kind of intervention we need to provide or where those gaps are going to be in instruction. So I'm not sure where this will end up, but right now they're telling us that we really need to try and have a good plan to have every student tested uh, this spring, meaning that those that are remote are going to have to come into the buildings and be scheduled into tests. So I am certain that uh, Dave and his team will come up with a process and a plan to ensure that we test as many of our students as possible. So that's what I have this evening. Dave, do you have anything? Um, I, I just thought I'd update you. Uh, the last couple of weeks, I've spent a lot of time trying to Track down staff, um, staff to fill in as substitutes. You know, we've we've talked about this going way back to the summer. What a challenge it was going to be this year um, to have substitutes. And um, I can tell you, when someone is out of the building now, very often we don't get anyone from the outside, so we're providing coverage uh, for all of these positions, and that impacts classroom teachers classroom assistants, school bus drivers across the board. Um, and it's not that we have really higher than normal um, absence rates. Uh, it's just that, um, you know, sometimes you, you can get a quarantine in any variety of ways that, that affects your staffing. And um, there just aren't people on the sub lists like they have been in the past. So um, I just wanted to I guess remind the board and remind the community that sometimes, um, you know, if if somebody has to be out of the building, we are scrambling to get substitutes in and and doing the best we can. And if a if a school bus um, is running five minutes or ten minutes late on a route because they have a substitute driver, it's it's a shortage that all districts are facing, uh, including us. So we're we're doing our best to uh, you know to keep our doors open. Uh, keep our in-person learning happening and um, and make sure that we have the the required number of adults to to student ratios. So um, I think that's that's really it. That's one of the things I've been working on over the past couple of weeks, trying to find people. <laughs> as well as contact trace. <laughs> well, that's ongoing. Right. That's that's it on the reports of the administrative team this evening. Are you ready for the recommendations? We are. Okay. Uh, the first item under recommendations of the superintendent is to approve the unpaid leave of Melissa R.G., first grade teacher at North Elementary School for the remainder of the school year and to accept her resignation at the end of the 2020, 2021 school year. I'll second. Any discussion? Well, Paul? Brian Horvath? Yes. 
Gene Sensi? Yes. John Douglas? Yes. Michael Howry? Yes. Michelle Hayes? Yes. Vote is 5 0. And under the standard personnel motion this evening, uh, we're asking you to accept the following resignation, to accept with regret the retirement resignation of Linda Crago, effective the end of the 2020-21 school year after 21 years of service to the district, to enter into the following employment contracts. Each of the following substitute teachers is approved by the Lake County Educational Service Center and or the Madison uh, Local School District Superintendent under a one-year limited substitute teacher contract, John McCann and Lorraine Zimmer. The following uh, persons as a casual day-to-day -day substitute, Victor uh, <clears throat> Lover to employ Merlene Joseph James as a building substitute at North Elementary School at a rate of $100 per day, effective February 16th, 2021 and to amend the starting date for Sean Edison from February 12, 2021 is found in board motion number 2621 to February 15, 2021. I'll move. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call. Gene Sensi? Yes. John Douglas? Yes. Michael Howry? Yes. Joel Hayes? Yes. Ryan Horvath? Yes. Vote is 5 0. And there are no items on the consent calendar this evening. So that's it for the recommendations of the superintendent. Okay, we'll now open the second public participation portion. Um, this is on any item. Anyone wishing to address the board would have five minutes to do so. If you could state your name and address for the board, please. Everyone should have the opportunity to unmute themselves. Like I said, I just, I'm here, uh, this is Paul Pastor, and uh, I'm here just to uh, experience the uh, meeting, uh, get, a, get, get an idea of what the board does, and uh, become a little more involved in these meetings. And uh, that's all I have to say today, but uh, I expect in the future I'll attend more meetings. So I appreciate the uh, opportunity. Welcome, Thank Paul. You. Also, you'll see that... Um, if you go to our website, all, all of our meetings are on our website as well. So you can go back and look at some, some past ones and specifically some of the, the recent past meetings that have um, a lot of explanation about our five-year forecast and things of that nature. Anyone else wishing to address the board? Hang on, Joe muted himself. I'm going to give him, a, give him the opportunity to mute himself again. Do it. Did that do it? Yep, you're good. That's yeah, it. we can hear you. Yeah. Okay. I'm just wondering about uh, this uh, uh, levy that you were talking about. Uh, when when did you plan on putting that on the ballot? The you want me to answer? Yeah. The levy is on the ballot on May 4th, 2021. Primary, May 4th, primary. May 4th. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think okay. That's... Uh, May 4th. Okay. I, 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 I want to know if you're doing any advertising. You're telling, you know, getting the word out that there is an election. Uh, I've talked to several, several people and they, they, didn't, they didn't even know it was going to be on a ballot. There's a uh, levy committee meeting tomorrow evening, the first levy committee meeting. And on the website, we just put out a press release on Friday. Uh, it was sent to the local papers this morning. So um, we're starting to get the word out. And it's been in the net now twice. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you, Joe. Anyone else wishing to address the board? I can't understand why I'm, what picture is up there. Joe, well, if you want to start your video, you can now. <laughs> Is 
So anyone else, Mike? Uh, Jerry Pira is unmuted. Okay. Hi, I'm just unmuted because I just joined. And she's muted at all. I see no one else. Okay. Well, we'll close the second uh, public participation portion. Do we have a, we do have a need to go into executive session. So do we have a motion to move into executive session for the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of public employees? I'll move. I'll second. Any discussion? Roll call. Douglas. Yes. Michael Howry. Yes. Michelle Hayes. Yes. Ryan Horvath. Yes. Dean Sensi. Yes. Vote is five zero. All right. We stand in recess. We will uh, not be planning to take any uh, official action when we return from executive session. So we will just return and close the meeting. <laughs>